So the goal of today's video is to, oh my gosh, why did I do that? The goal of today's video is to, basically these are all of the teams that qualified for Worlds and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about all 22 of them and power rank them. Let's, uh, let's get to ranking these. So these are, act, these are in order of the seed, so like from LCS, 100 Thieves is first seed, TL second, Cloud9 third. I guess I will start with the LCS, and I will see if I have 22 teams, I'll go from 10 to... Alright, so I will put those in later. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to like order them. So, 100 Thieves, they exist. Uh, I know I've talked about this before, but personally, I don't think 100 Thieves is a very strong team. I don't want to completely change my mind on 100 Thieves. Like, I don't want to suddenly be like all hail 100 thieves are the best team in north america because i definitely don't think they are it's just that i have trouble putting either team in front at this point like i i, I before i had 100 thieves losing to c9 and then i had 100 thieves losing to tl so you know that didn't happen um tl kind of looked like they were that they reverted a little bit like to their old habits but it was like a one-off and they did beat 100 thieves like in playoffs so if you look at that, it's kind of like a one-to-one -one kind of thing. Cloud9, on the other hand, I feel I feel pretty comfortable putting Cloud9 below 100 Thieves at this point. I think that Perks has not been having the year that a lot of people thought he was going to have. Uh, I think that Blabber shows moments of brilliance and then moments of not-so-brilliance. And I don't think that they have, like... I don't think that they're bot laners. I don't think that any bot laner from North America is on the same level as, as anyone else. But TL, on the other hand, I'm going to put TL above 100 Thieves. Like I said, I know that 100 Thieves uh, kind of destroyed TL in finals, but TL did beat 100 Thieves in playoffs, and I also still just think that TL's a more around, like a more all-around solid team. I feel like 100 Thieves have so many just, just weak points. I don't think that their drafts are very good. Uh, I don't think that someday is very good. In terms of players that impress me from 100 Thieves, it's really just closer, to be honest. Like Abadage is having a good season, but I don't, I don't think that Abadage's summer split was any better than his spring split with Shaka. I was more impressed when he was on Shaka, to be honest. I don't think that LCS is anywhere as strong as the LEC, but I'm a little bit undecided about where to put Rogue. But I do think that LCS kind of LEC kind of speaks for itself when it's mad and fanatic. I love Rogue. I think that Rogue is a very good team. The problem is that. They've shown to choke over and over again in, in uh, playoff types of situations. But I will say that um, last year they did have Finn, which was like a big Debbie Downer. But they did show a pretty impressive game against PSG Talon. And that's because in group stage, the format is best of one. And I feel like Rogue does do better in best of ones. And then so I, I'm not going to completely drop them. I, I feel like they would do okay in groups. Like, historically, they're not too bad in best of ones and then really bad in series. I do think, however, that they, they, they lost 0-3 to both of these teams, I think. That could be the wrong score, who knows. But they lost to both of these teams, so I'm not going to put them above. I think that Matt is by far the best team in the LEC. I mean, obviously, discounting the fact that I'm a huge Misfits nerd, but I can't say that Misfits is, is any better than these guys. They lost to both Rogue and Fnatic. Of the three European teams going to Worlds, I have Mattis first. Like, they don't lose best of fives. They're really good at team fighting. The question just then becomes, do I put TL above or below Rogue? Anyway, I'm just going to uh, put that there, because I think we all know that that's true. Yes, FBX is the two seed in the LPL. Yes, EDG beat them in a best of five, but EDG is not a better team by FBX. If you were to repeat that series 10 times, FBX wins seven or eight of them. So then the question becomes, is EDG better than all of the Korean teams? But uh, I'll get to that. So I personally, and now this is like kind of a weird take, but I don't think RNG is very good. I'm willing to just put RNG right there. I don't think that RNG is very good. Uh, a lot of people would say that they're very good, but the problem is that their summer split just looked really weak. Like, yeah, they had, the, they had their nice little run like at the end, but then they got knocked out by LNG in playoffs pretty convincingly. I mean, they did beat um they did beat WE in regionals, but I just don't think that RNG should be the third seed. I think they should be the fourth seed from LPL. I think that LNG should be the third seed. Uh on paper, LNG should be either 3 or 4, but I think that LNG is a much stronger team than than uh, people give it credit for. 
Like for example, I'm currently undecided about LNG versus EDG. Now I know that they've played in best of fives. I know that EG, EDG won those best of fives, but I'm still unsure. And the reason why I'm unsure is because when I look at LNG's team on paper, they just have such a, they have such an unbelievably powerful team, right? Like they have um, their top side of Ale, Tarzan, and Icon is one of, if not the strongest top sides I can think of like in the world. While I wasn't a huge fan of Light and Iwandi in the beginning, like I, I gotta say that they've both really grown on me. Mainly because I, when I first were, was like watching them, I, know, I didn't really understand why. I didn't really think they were that good until I realized what exactly was happening. And what's happening is that Iwandi is the lowest duo proximity of like any support. And what that means is that he's roaming everywhere all the time. He's never in his own lane. And despite that, Light is still able to keep up in most situations and then so from the outside looking in it doesn't really seem like light is standing out but when you realize that his support is only there like like 30 percent of the time you realize that light is basically just playing a 1v2 every single game and and doing okay and, and i mentioned this before but light has some really crazy strategies that i would never see working like he um he'll pick vein into ziggs as a counter pick which i will never understand but he keeps doing it and it keeps working, so the fact that he has the confidence to pick Vayne into Ziggs uh, is crazy. Because Vayne is like a lower range, lower range auto attacks, um, kind of a late game pick. And the rule with Ziggs is that if you're playing with Ziggs and you go even, or even if Ziggs falls behind a little bit, that means that the Ziggs is winning because they're a mage in the bot lane. And Ziggs scales incredibly well, like specifically like turret damage is one thing you can think of. Team fighting is crazy for Ziggs. So basically when you pick Vayne into Ziggs, what you're saying is, is I'm going to destroy you in this lane and then outscale you, which is a very bold decision to make because in theory, Ziggs should be able to just poke Vayne out. Every single time Vayne goes up to farm with her smaller auto range, Ziggs should be able to get a free empowered auto or free Q or whatever. But Light is just a mad lad, I guess, and he always he always figures it out. I think that LNG is very strong. I mean, obviously, when you look at e, uh, when you look at EDG, you have the man himself, Viper, who's arguably one of the best ADCs in the world. Sorry, I said that wrong. Arguably the best ADC in the world. Now, my opinion is a little bit different. I'll talk about it later. But I would definitely put Viper top five, top three in the world. Their mid laner Scout. I'm also very very impressed by Scout most of the time. Uh, he plays like a mechanically talented Demonte. It feels like he's the one like dictating all of the plays that EDG make. If he falls behind, he still always finds himself he always finds a way to make himself useful. But the the reason why I don't really like see EDG as the same powerhouse as everybody else does is mainly just because well, uh, I don't really like EDG's top side all that much. I don't I don't like their um I don't like their jungler or their top laner. Flandre and um JJ slash Jungia. Like Jungia played some games earlier in the season and did not show up very well. And then JJ had some games in playoffs that seemed really, really dicey, especially in their series against WE. So I have doubts about EDG and I have a lot of faith in LNG. I might actually end up putting LNG over EDG, even though a lot of people will disagree with that. All right, now we have to slot the LCK in there. Um, oh God, I don't want to. <sighs> I'll put Hana Life Esports here right now. I mean, the, the Hana Life is one of the worst teams in worlds. They have Chovy, of course. Chovy's a Chovy's a beast. Um, one of the best mid laners in the world, probably the best mid laner in the world. But oh my God, he's it's it's like it's like Chovy, and then he's dragging like four. 50 pound weights with him. Don't get me wrong, Deft is a very respectable ADC. Like in his prime, Deft was was definitely one of the best out there. But he's just not having the year that his last couple of years have been a little bit of a slump actually. His um 2020 season with DRX, not the most impressive, and now 2021 with uh with Hanma Life Esports, not very impressive. He stepped up during playoffs. He stepped up big time during playoffs on the Aphelios pick. T1 is a team that I will probably slot in around here with Fnatic. I don't think T1's as good as Mad Lions. I don't think T1's as good as RNG. Um, T1 is a very young team, and they had they have like flashes of brilliance sometimes. But but overall, other than other than like Caria, I just don't. I'm not. I'm not always super impressed by T1. And I, I talked more about T1 like in previous videos in my um, playoffs predictions video. And then so I'm just going to move on. Let's see. 
we have Genji and Damankia. So, so here's the, here's the thing: is that I I think that Damankia and Genji are no, you know what? Screw it, screw it. I'm I'm gonna double down on on my opinion. I don't think Damankia is as good as everybody thinks they are. Damankia is bot lane, uh, Ghost and Barrel. They're they're it's like a mid tier ADC and a and a, and a mid tier support. I'm just I'm just not convinced by their lineup. Showmaker is very good, but Showmaker tilts. It's just, it's just how it is. Showmaker is just a tilty player. Well, I when I watch Damwon play, it's not it's not the same as last year, where they just felt like some impenetrable fortress. This year they have a lot of cracks, and their regular season didn't didn't look super impressive. Like they they finished on top, like they finished uh, tied on top with a bunch of other teams. But I had no faith in them going into playoffs, and and while they won playoffs, I still don't feel very strong about their chances. If I had to pick a Korean team that I thought would actually win worlds it would definitely be gen g like they have the same stacked lineup as last year pretty much um bdd is definitely one of my favorite mid laners to watch especially and i i feel like gen g and and damon is very very similar to the um edg fpx series where it's like yeah they won but i feel like if it happened a hundred times gen g would win more often and I'll, I'll sort these all out later but this, these are just my general thoughts okay pcs psg talon all right I love PSG so much. I think there's there's such a strong team. PSG probably slots in with, with this group here. And the reason why PSG Talon is so strong is because their carries, Hanabi, Maple, and Unified, are some of the most impressive carries to watch. Maple has Maple runs it down sometimes, but Maple's a legend. Like I, I can't I can't talk bad about him. He's I mean he's up there with um uh if I'm trying to think of other wildcard teams like Levi, Likrit. Like he's he's in the same the same realm as they are, and so is Hanabi. Hanabi was also on the Flash Wolves teams. One thing that I really like about PSG is that it feels like a lot of teams kind of gave up on on metas that I still thought were very much viable. Like Gwen's level one got nerfed uh, when her E was was cut from forty percent to twenty percent. A lot of teams dropped Gwen. I still think Gwen is very strong. Hanabi still plays Gwen, so that's like that's an example. And then their ADC Unified is. Um, and, and when I was talking about Viper earlier, when I said Viper is one of the best ADCs, that's because I, I truly think that Unified is the best ADC in the world. And and um, in MSI, I was very confident that PSG was going to make top four, even with Doggo. And to be honest, if Unified was on that team, I'd see a world where PSG wins it all, right? Like if you ever watch Unified play, it's similar to watching ADC Chovy, where it's like his CSing is amazing, his wave vanishment is amazing. He is very good at carrying his teams. In fact, he was actually the PCS um, spring MVP. But he 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 is considered to be uh, arguably the best player in the PCS. And then Beyond Gaming is really interesting because normally I would have Beyond Gaming like like right down here, like all the way at the bottom. But but they took PSG to five games in the final which is very impressive because i would i would have never expected beyond gaming to do that obviously beyond gaming has their adc doggo who a lot of people remember subbed in for unified but their jungler is very very aggressive he's always looking for for level three level four dives looking for early ganks uh, looking to abuse everything that he can uh so beyond gaming is really interesting to watch they're not like the the, the best team macro wise but they're always trying to play as aggressively as possible at all times so they're a pretty dangerous team i would i would slot in beyond gaming like right down here I'm, i i would not put them all the way at the bottom okay uh tco galatasaray okay so galatasaray is really <laughs> really interesting team to watch because you have you have a dynamic where where their top laner crazy is running it down as hard as possible where their mid laner balulu on the other hand, is absolutely smurfing over everybody, trying to, trying to win the game before Crazy can lose the game. I think that Galatasaray is by far the strongest team that the TCL has ever sent anywhere. Uh, I'm really excited for them. I think that they are that they're definitely one of the stronger teams, like from the wildcard regions, if not the strongest. I'm gonna put, I'd put them like right there, honestly, right there with TL and Rogue, maybe ahead of them. Red Kalunga, I'm gonna put you here. I don't even want to talk about you. The CB lol is a complete mess. Pain gaming is is probably their best representative, but even Pain just doesn't like doesn't stand up to. In MSI, Pain was probably the team I was the least impressed with, and that includes like Pentanet and stuff. LCL somehow somehow Unicorns of Love managed to win the final after going down 0-1. I have no idea how. 
because unicorns of love just looks pitiful this year i don't know i don't know if their whole entire team dynamic just got destroyed when gadget left because they've been swapping around adcs all year and none of them have really been been sticking like i know that they signed this with this uh this super talented adc and then he couldn't play because of the language barrier and so then they swapped to uh i think his name is Loken, but or lodic 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 sorry Loken plays in does not play in a minor region uh lodic was like sub was um subbed in he was one at msi he didn't do very well they're playing with the new adc he's also not doing very well i thought for sure that um black star gaming uh crow crowd would have made it but nope it was you all and they look super weak this year worse than every other year i've seen them um detonation focus me i mean detonation focus me is all about their solo lanes evie and aria two very strong solo laners and msi um Everybody remembers them because they had that one game where they almost beat Dom One, which of course is not as impressive as people thought it was back then. Um, but they're still a very strong team. Like they're they're the clear favorites from the LJL. Um, I know that when they when they dropped their series to Rascal Jester, that I pretty much said like of all the results that I could possibly pick out. I was the most confident that Detonation Focus Me would win their way through the loser's bracket and then beat Rascal Jester. Like, I had, I, I was, I, I think I said 95% sure that Detonation Focus Me, despite being in loser's bracket, was going to be the LJL representative. And then they get to the final and they 3 0 Rascal Jester. So, one of the predictions I was right with, unlike all of my LCS predictions. So, I'm pretty impressed with Detonation Focus Me. I think they can definitely knock out some top tier teams. Okay, Gillette Infinity is a team that I don't really enjoy too much. I don't think that they're a very good team, except for their mid laner, Cody. Cody is an absolute mad lad. I think that he is by far, this is a very bold statement, I think he's by far the best Zoe player in the entire world. And that's, if I had to, to pick somebody who, whose Zoe's could compare, maybe I would say like uh, VTO and Maple are the only two other Zoe's I can think of. Uh, that that are on the same level as Cody's Zoe, like mechanically. I can't really say too much about like macro, but um, Cody does some crazy things on Zoe. If you don't believe me, just just watch um, the LLA final, Gillette Infinity versus Astral Esports, because Cody pops off super hard. But as a team, I don't think they're very strong. In fact, I'd put them bottom tier. Same thing with Peace. They, I mean, they ran the gauntlet, right? They they went um. 10 and 11 in regular season and then somehow beat all four teams that were on that were ahead of them but like when i think about pieces roster i don't actually i can't actually think of any individual player that stands out in the same way that i cope with pentanet where it's like where it's like okay you have Chaz and pabu right but like with peace i can't picture that player they don't really have a star player i think i really think they just had a miracle clutch and that that's all that they're going to get so now I'm going to sort these guys out. So at the bottom, Peace, Gillette, UOL, and uh, Red Kalunga. By far the best from this bunch is Gillette Infinity. So we'll slot those right there. I think Red Kalunga is the worst team in the tournament. The CB Lil's looking the weakest they've ever looked. And Red Kalunga is like, what, their, their third, third, fourth, fourth, fifth best team? Like the final was literally the four seed versus the six seed. Um... I'll put UOL over Peace, just because like at least when I think about UOL, I can pick out specific players like No Man's, um, No Man's, uh, Anonisic. Like I can I can think of players who have carry potential, whereas with Peace, I really can't. Okay, uh, Hama Life and Cloud Nine. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Hama Life. I don't really think that they're going to get anywhere. I mean, I think it's really cool that Chovy and Deft made it back, right? Like, if Hanma Life Esports ends up winning Worlds, that would be such a cool. That would be such a cool narrative. Like Chovy and Deft get on a team with, with some trash and, and carry both of themselves to their first Worlds victory ever. Uh, interesting, interesting thing is that uh, Chovy has actually now made the last three Worlds tournaments all with different teams none of which as the first seed. So that's, that's just an interesting fact. And then, of course, that puts Cloud9 right above them. Then I'm going to have 100 Thieves. I don't think 100 Thieves is that much better than Cloud9. Uh, I feel like 100 Thieves is very exploitable in different ways, uh, whereas Beyond Gaming and Detonation Focus Me are both um, 
Detonation Focus Me is a very, very clean team, and Beyond Gaming is a very, very aggressive team, and 100 Thieves is a team that just exists, kind of. Okay, so out of these two teams, I definitely think that Detonate, Detonation Focus Me is better. Like I said, I feel like Detonation Focus Me is one of those teams that has the potential to just like straight up destroy everybody. Um, then I'm gonna have Team Liquid. Like I said, I don't think the Team Liquid is super far off from the North American teams. Like if I really had to talk about these three, I would say that you could probably, I feel like any given person could put these in any order and make a solid argument about it. I don't think that these teams are super far apart from each other. And then I'm gonna have Rogue on top of them. I think that uh, that Rogue is a very, very strong team on paper, but something about them in, in like critical situations, they just choke. I mean, they've had roughly the same players for the last while. They've had Larson, Inspired, and Hans Sama. And those three players are all supposed to be really good, but they, they just don't show up, so I can't really... I don't have the confidence to put them at the top like I used to. And then that puts Galatasaray here. Let me, let me put it this way. If Galatasaray did not have crazy on their team and instead had like any form of 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 reliable weak side top laner like let's let's say that galatasaray had had hanabi right they shoot way up because their 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 entire team especially Balulu, is is very very good um of the teams that are left here i mean i think it's fanatic is next i didn't really talk about fanatic a lot uh, i mean the roster is very solid right they have upset they have uh, niski hillisang um, Bwipo has been doing really well in the jungle, but I feel like Adam still has a lot of growth uh, as a player that he needs to go through. This is going to be his first international competition, so he's going to have a lot to learn from from that standpoint. So I feel like putting Fnatic like any higher than, than number 10 is a little bit of a stretch. <sighs> T1 and Dom1. I mean, I... Logic tells me that, that Dom1 is better. And and like Canyon is a very strong player. Khan is a is like a legendary top laner. And then Showmaker is one of the best mids in the world. Um, versus T1, where it's really just their bot lane and then Faker sometimes. Okay, top seven. So the next best team out of this bunch is definitely RNG. Uh, RNG's big hole, and the and the reason the main reason why I don't have any faith in them whatsoever is because of their mid laner Cryon. And there's this narrative around Cryon that he's. Uh, some kind of like low resource king who isn't flashy in lane but will scale up and carry the team later but it's just not true like he's not flashy in lane and then he's not flashy in the late game like he's just a, a weak mid laner and i feel like there there are so many teams in worlds this year that just have really impressive mids like you have um like you have cody you have chovy perks right uh you have like um like Aria, um, Bululu. Like, so I just I just feel like RNG's big weakness is heavily targeted by a lot of the teams below them. And then, of course, all the teams above them just have insane mids, like, like uh, doing the Icon, Scout. Like, you, you can't say that, that RNG is in their element this world's. Um, next, I would put... I'll put Gen G next. Like I, I, I personally think that, that the LEC is stronger than the LCK this year. Now I know that that doesn't show here because I have a lot of their teams ahead, but I, I feel like if you took um, LCK's 10 teams and you took LEC's 10 teams and they all went head-to-head, -head, I feel like the LEC would, would win more games. They would win at least five. You know, It would at least be even, but I feel like they could take six or seven. Um However, Genji, like I said before, is the most impressive team in Korea. I think they're very good, but I don't think that they're better than Matt or PSG. And I'm gonna have Matt here. Matt has a lot of impressive players. I feel like um, El Yoya is has has stood out a lot, being as new as he is. I feel like Armut for his first season, like in a in a major region, is doing some some pretty impressive things. He runs it down sometimes, but I mean, like it's okay. So I think that Matt is a very strong all around team, and they have really good team fighting. Uh, which is really strong for for the current meta. So I, I have a lot of I have a lot of faith in Mad, which I did not at the beginning of um, of the split. I thought that Mad was a well, I, I didn't even think Mad was gonna win. Like I, I didn't even think Mad was gonna qualify. I thought it was gonna be 
um <clears throat> what, what did i say at the beginning of the year rogue g2 and misfits i think or rogue fanatic misfits something like that and i'm actually going to i know that that i should have psg next but i just i'm looking at this and i just don't i don't see it i i think that um you know i'm gonna have edg psg lng that's that's what i'm gonna put my heart says LNG is second and PSG is third, but on paper, EDG just performs much better than LNG, and EDG is definitely really, really strong. So I don't feel confident putting PSG above EDG just because PSG is from a minor region, you know? Like, I can't... I don't have enough, like, data to, to talk about whether PSG can, can compete at the highest level other than the fact that it, at MSI, they knocked out... Not knocked out, but they, they picked up games against both RNG and Dom1. I don't know, any ch any last minute changes I wanna make? I mean, this looks pretty accurate to me. Maybe I'm giving Beyond Gaming too much credit. Yeah, I think I am. I'll, I'll move up the... I'll move those guys up. And I'll move, I'll move Han Han Life up too, because they did pretty well in regionals. Like, they, they ran a gauntlet to get here too. All right, this looks pretty accurate to me, actually. This looks pretty good to me. I'm I'm happy with this. So this is my ranking. Top five: Mad, LNG, PSG, EDG, FPX. I mean, it goes to show my thoughts pretty easily. Like LPL is very strongly on top. LEC has been doing pretty well this season. Uh, the PCS is very underrated. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. Well, there you have it. Those are my rankings.